Greece is Greece, you know, you don't get more metal. Never, you will never get more metal on the planet Earth than the Greek audience. I guess I, I had been told for years, um, since the first album came out, that if we ever came there, we were going to, that, you know, basically we had no idea what was in store. And we finally got there in, I guess it was 96 or 97, I can't remember exactly, when we first went there, and it was just, it was exactly what, like what the guy told me. I mean, we, we first flew into uh, Thessaloniki and there was a bunch of kids at the airport and they were just going nuts and I mean the show was out of control. And we, they rented a bus for us, chartered a bus for us to go from Thessaloniki to Athens the next day. It was us and Nevermore was there, so they were our support band and we had uh, um, a couple journalists on the bus with us. And one of the guys was from Metal Hammer, and he said he was inter he interviewed me for like half of the ride, and it was about a seven or eight hour ride, so it was a big story or something. And and the guy that was uh, he said that that he said John, you have no idea what's going to happen when you get there, and it was like he was right. And we pulled into a crowd of people in front of the venue that was giant. I don't even know how many were there. I mean, it was fairly early in the day, so you know maybe a thousand kids or whatever. But they went absolutely fucking mental. I mean, it was uh, it was actually a little bit scary because my tour manager at the time was a little dude, a little dude named Bobo, and he was like literally lifted up. I mean, they they when I got off the bus and he was in front of me, they swarmed big time, and I mean, were like pulling at my hair and shit and at the at the clothes and stuff. And he's a little guy, and he's like trying to push forward like a football, like an American football player, pushing through this crowd, and. I was literally lifted up off the ground and one of the crew guys was behind me just leaning into my back and pushing towards the door, towards the entrance of the door and I was off the ground by like four to six inches. I mean, I wasn't even walking. They are just pushing me there because the people had, had me lifted up. It was absolutely fucking chaos, man. And I, the journalist, I fall into the front of the venue because I'm up off the ground and uh, the journalist ends up coming in right behind me and he's got the camera on me and the recorder. John, what's going through your head right now? And I don't remember what I said, but it was just the weirdest feeling like, you know, it was crazy. Like these people are mental for the band. And after the show, I knew that after the show in Athens, I knew that was where we were going to do the live album. Whenever it would happen, that was it. Because the crowd was not just a little passionate. <laughs> I mean, they were out of their minds passionate, like singing every every word to every song, full volume, louder than the PA system most of the time. I saw so many kids that had tears running down their face, you know. I mean, it was just, it was just unbelievable. I couldn't even sleep for like three days because the adrenaline rush was so fucking intense. It was like, a, I've never experienced, experienced anything like that. So... I started from that moment on, I mean, even Thessaloniki, which was a, it was a smaller gig, but still a great one. You know, it was like, wow, there's really something here. I don't know what it is. I never still don't understand what, what it is that the Greeks get about Iced Earth or why they're so much more intense about it than other markets. I mean, our fans are great everywhere, but it's like a there's this certain uh, level of, of passion there that is really remarkable. You asked about some of the things that happened. I mean, you know, we usually get, our hotel usually gets surrounded and, you know, by fans and they're out there singing and going crazy and stuff during the day and hanging around the lobby. And But there was a point when the Demons and Wizards album, we did a, uh, a signing in this record store. And it turned out to be far bigger than anything that they ever expected. And we had reported 5,000 kids show up in a little tiny record store that, you know, had four employees, no security, no nothing, you know. And they were letting 15 kids in at a time. And these kids were coming in with stacks of stuff, you know. And it was like, it was just getting out of control. I mean, I could see, I, I could, I could, the chants and stuff were, that they were doing were just out of control. And you could see their faces like smashing up on the whole front of the store was made of glass and they're they were smashing up against the glass and it was really fucking loud and it was really getting kind of crazy 
the whole front of the store came crashing down. Glass like guillotines, man, dropping. People getting fucking cut up, you know, like head split open. One guy had a big chunk of meat taken off of his shoulder. Another guy's uh, main artery got cut in his leg and there was just, it was fucking blood everywhere. It was absolutely crazy. There was no way to get out of the place. Um, there was no back door. There was only a basement. The basement didn't have any way to get out. And uh, so the people that worked at the store immediately, you know, obviously there was injured. They dropped the security gates down and they get the injured inside. Um, and we, we got the injured people down in the basement. Well, the, I had to tie a tourniquet around this kid's leg because he was going to die. I mean, there was, I'd never seen blood like this. We're walking around in pools of fucking blood. You know, it was just crazy. And the cops come and they, they, they're like, you guys have to sign. We've got a riot situation on our hands that there's, they're blocking the streets. This is a mob of people. Traffic can't get through. You know, there's helicopters flying around out there for the national news. And we're stuck, man. You know, and I said, well, what do you want us to do? I mean, we can't go up there. And he said, you know, the, the guy that, that had put the event on is like, just, we'll get sheets of paper. So somehow they got like five, 6,000 sheets of blank white paper. And Hansi and I sat down there for about five hours and signed the papers. And they would just take stacks up. And, you know, towards the end of it, um, there was a, got down to where there was a couple hundred kids left. And they were being pretty calm. And uh, they came, the guy came in and said, hey, you know, it's kind of mellowed out. Can you guys go ahead and go upstairs and, uh, and sign their stuff? And, and we did it. We went back up and, uh, you know, it, we had one kid who had had his head split open. And he had already been in the ambulance, been to the hospital, came back with his head stapled shut. And his hat, like a big part of his head was shaved off. And he had me sign his head. So... <laughs> I swear to God, dude, it was absolutely out of control. And that's...